Bulk milk weighers and samplers play an important role in the nation's milk marketing system. You are an important link between the dairy producers, milk processors, regulating agencies, and ultimately the consuming public. As a bulk milk weigher and sampler, you'll grade, sample, and measure the milk in a farm bulk milk tank, withdraw it, and deliver it to a dairy plant. You are much more than a truck driver. Your job is important because it directly impacts the dairy producer's livelihood and helps protect public health. In addition to determining if the milk is acceptable for pickup, you also sample and weigh the milk, all of which has a direct impact on producer payment, processor expenditures, and hauling expenses. Your success in this role will depend upon your willingness and ability to accept these responsibilities while collecting milk from the farm bulk tanks. The small samples that you collect impact the entire dairy industry. It is critical that your sampling technique provides a sample that accurately reflects the content of the entire tank. Because you are a highly visible representative of the dairy industry and have more contact with the dairy producers than anyone else, the decision to accept or reject milk is one of the most difficult decisions you will make as a milk hauler. The friendly relationship you develop with producers on your route can make it difficult to reject a tank of milk in question. Nevertheless, as a milk hauler, you will likely encounter a tank of milk that must be rejected. Not rejecting a questionable tank of milk can ruin an entire tank load, which can in turn ruin an entire silo of milk. A ruined silo may represent a loss of thousands of dollars to the dairy processor and a reduced milk check for the dairy producers associated with the dairy plant. Substandard milk, if it is processed, will likely result in a dairy product that does not reflect the quality and wholesome goodness consumers have come to expect from Wisconsin dairy producers. Be sure to know and understand your plant's process and policy regarding these situations. So to help you get started, let's take a look first at the basics of what you should plan to wear, the equipment you will need, and the cleanliness that is expected from those who earn their living in the dairy industry. As you begin your day, make sure your tanker is properly cleaned, sanitized, and in good repair, and that you have all the necessary equipment and supplies to perform your duties. Your tanker is required to be properly identified. The grade A permit number and the identification of the state that issued the permit must be displayed on both sides of the tanker with characters at least two inches in height. The outer appearance of the tanker should be clean at all times. The tanker should have a current inspection sticker and must have a wash tag appropriately secured near the pump area. The wash tag attached to your tanker must include the date, time, and location where the tank was cleaned and sanitized. It must also show the tanker identification, the grade A permit number if applicable, and the signature or initials of the employee who washed and sanitized the tanker. A clean truck is a prominent symbol of the dairy industry and helps to convey a positive image to the public. Even though plants and milk receiving stations use clean in place equipment and may assist you in cleaning your tanker, it is your responsibility as a licensed and permitted bulk milk wear and sampler to maintain a clean and sanitary vehicle. Since you are a highly visible representative of the dairy industry, you should maintain a clean and neat appearance and use good personal hygiene. Dress appropriately for work conditions and keep safety in mind. You should wear clean clothes when performing your duties at a dairy farm. Your hands and arms should be clean and free of sores or lesions. If you have developed a sore or lesion, be sure to wear gloves to eliminate contact with the milk. A conscientious bulk milk weigher and sampler will thoroughly examine the tanker, equipment, and supplies at the start of each day. You should make sure you have the following supplies and equipment. Sample containers stored in a sanitary manner. A sample dipper with sanitizing solution in the dipper tube. A spray or squeeze bottle of sanitizer. An appropriate sanitizer test kit. An insulated sample carrying case with a rack to hold sample containers filled with adequate ice and water 
to maintain sample temperature of 32 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit. A dial or digital thermometer that is accurate to plus or minus two degrees and has been certified accurate once every six months. A waterproof indelible marker. A watch or other timing device such as a cell phone. A supply of milk weight tickets and pen or pencil and single service paper towels. Now let's review proper milk pickup routine. When approaching the milk house, always keep an eye out for children and animals. Never use tobacco or take food inside the milk house and always wash your hands before performing any of your official duties. Flavor is the most important factor in consumer acceptance of dairy products. Some of the most common odors or flavors found in milk are feed, weedy, rancid, barney and unclean, bacterial, salty, and foreign. You must be able to recognize off odors and you must observe the surface of the milk in the bulk tank by lifting or sliding the cover on the bulk tank. Visibly inspect the milk for abnormalities with the milk house light on. Normal milk varies in color from bluish white to golden yellow. Appearance defects can include bloody milk, which can be caused by milking newly freshened cows or cows with severe mastitis infections. Even small amounts of blood can give the milk in the tank a reddish tinge. Partially churned milk will have fat globules floating on the surface or sticking to the walls of the bulk tank. It is often caused by excessive agitation of the milk at warm temperatures. The size of the globules can range from the size of a pinhead to the size of a pea. Frozen milk. The presence of ice indicates the bulk tank is not operating properly. It may be present as ice floating on the surface of the milk or ice sheets at the bottom of the empty tank. Excessive foaming is caused by the agitator running too fast, the drop pipe leading into the tank being too short, or an air leak in the milking equipment. Tanks that display excessive foaming should receive immediate attention. Excessive foam can make it difficult to acquire a representative sample or measure the milk properly. Extraneous matter such as dust, insects, grass, or other foreign material indicates careless handling practices such as leaving the tank lid open, leaving the milk house door open, or improper filtering. If you see any of these abnormalities, you should report it to both the milk producer and the receiving plant field representative. You are required to read and record the temperature of the milk at each farm you visit. If the milk is collected more than two hours after the last milking, you should reject the milk if its temperature exceeds 45 degrees Fahrenheit. If milk from two or more milkings is collected within two hours of the last milking, you should reject the milk if its temperature exceeds 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Temperatures that don't fall within these limits might be an indication that the bulk tank is not cooling properly and may produce an off flavor or high bacteria count. You should notify the milk producer and plant right away if cooling is an issue. It is your responsibility to verify that the bulk tank thermometer is reading accurately every month. Verify the tank temperature against your pocket thermometer once a month and record both readings monthly. Milk weights are based on a measurement using a graduated measuring rod or sight glass. Each graduation is equivalent to a determined number of pounds of milk posted on a conversion chart calibrated for the specific tank. In this example, we are demonstrating the use of a graduated measuring rod. Accurate measurement can only be obtained when the surface of the milk in the bulk tank is completely motionless. If the agitator is running when you arrive, turn it off right away and wait until the surface is motionless. This can take 10 minutes or more. Once the surface is motionless, insert the cleaned and dried measuring rod into the tank for reading. Remove the rod and read to the nearest graduation mark. If the reading appears to be exactly midway between two graduations, the reading should be recorded as that of the even number. After reading the stick, you will use the manufacturer's conversion chart to convert the measuring rod reading to pounds of milk. The following information must be recorded on both the milk house and dairy plant collection records. 
milk producer number, your license number and expiration date, your signature or initials, date and time of collection, temperature of the milk, and gauge reading and weight of milk. The milk collection record must accompany the load to the dairy plant. The proper analysis of a sample of milk, whether it is for bacteria, fat, or any other test, is dependent upon the reliability of the sampling procedure. To obtain a satisfactory sample, it must be representative of all of the milk in the bulk tank. The first step is to agitate the milk to get a proper sample for composition and quality testing. Tanks smaller than 1,500 gallons must be agitated for a minimum of five minutes. Tanks of 1,500 gallons or larger must be agitated for a minimum of 10 minutes. While waiting for proper agitation, you can prepare to take the sample and complete necessary paperwork. Before taking the sample, properly identify the sample container. Using your waterproof pen or a barcode sticker, record the milk producer's identification number and collection date. Rinse the sanitized dipper twice in the milk before taking the sample. Handle the sample containers in a sanitary manner. Be careful not to touch the inside of the sample container and the lid. When pouring the sample into the sample container, take care not to contaminate the sample or spill milk back into the open bulk tank. Do not transfer the milk over the open manhole, but rather off to the side. The sample container should be filled approximately two-thirds full. After collecting the sample, reposition the manhole cover or tank lid to protect the milk. Never sample milk from the tank outlet valve. If this is the first stop of your load, you must also take a second sample of milk as a temperature control sample. This sample must be identified with the following. TC for temperature control. The date, the time, milk temperature, the producer identification number, and your initials. Immediately place the sample in the insulated sample case fitted with a rack and keep it at 32 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit until it is delivered to the dairy plant. The rack keeps samples upright and prevents ice water from covering the sample tops. The ice water in your sample case should be slightly above milk level in the sample container. Rinse the sample dipper tube with water and place it back in the sanitizing solution in the dipper well. After weighing and sampling the milk, carefully examine the tank outlet valve. If the outlet valve appears to be leaking or is not capped, clean and sanitize the outlet valve completely. Connect the hose and place the hose cap where it will not be contaminated. To prevent damage to the tank, make sure it is properly vented. Open the tank valve, start the pump, and begin the transfer. When the tank is empty, turn off the pump, disconnect, and cap the hose and replace it in the truck. Observe the inner walls of the bulk tank, looking for abnormalities such as ice, sediment, or other defects. Rinse the bulk tank and floor with cold or warm water and close the tank lid. If you observe any abnormalities, contact the dairy plant immediately. Never rinse the tank with a milk hose still hooked up. A reminder that it is illegal to take milk from a bulk tank that is overfilled. You also cannot transfer any milk from a container other than the bulk tank. Any milk in a container other than the bulk tank cannot be emptied into the bulk tank. A bulk tank is considered full when the level of the milk in the tank is equal to the maximum reading on the conversion chart that is supplied with the bulk tank. Any level of milk that exceeds the highest reading on the bulk tank conversion chart or milk that is stored in extra storage vessels cannot be picked up. State law states that bulk milk weighers and samplers shall not estimate the weight of milk that is in the bulk tank in excess of the highest calibration of the conversion chart or milk that is in extra vessels. This is a fraudulent practice and may be considered theft on the part of the milk producer, the receiving dairy plant, and or the milk hauler. This practice may be punishable by law. Your duties as a licensed bulk milk weigher and sampler when encountering an overfilled bulk milk tank include the following. Refuse to pick up the milk in the tank as it cannot be properly agitated to obtain a representative sample of the milk in the tank. 
refuse to pick up excess milk in extra storage vessels, as it is not an unapproved sanitary storage vessel. Ask the milk producer to remove any milk that is above the highest measurement on the conversion chart supplied with the bulk milk tank. This milk cannot be added back into the bulk tank for the current or any later pickups. Inform the milk producer that their current tank is inadequately sized and they should work with their dairy plant to find an appropriately sized tank to hold the volume of milk they produce. Report an overfilling of the bulk tank or the filling of extra storage vessels to DATCAP. Arrange for more frequent milk pickup. Suggest that producers can dry up cows so that all milk fits in the bulk tank. It is crucial in your role as a bulk milk weigher and sampler that you follow procedures that ensure that the highest quality of milk is collected. Before leaving, finish your paperwork, clean up, and turn off the lights. Now you are ready for your next producer pickup. When you arrive at the milk plant, be sure to have everything in order. Your paperwork should be complete, accurate, and legible, and you should have a complete sample for your route. Personnel in the milk receiving area will examine your equipment and paperwork and take a sample to test for antibiotics and other tests for milk quality. After your load is cleared and approved, you can unload your milk. Take your samples out of your storage case and carefully place them in the plant's refrigerator. Wisconsin rules require that facilities are made available to clean and sanitize tankers, but it is still your responsibility to make sure that is being done. Confirm a properly completed wash tank has been placed in the sample compartment. The following parts of the tanker must be dismantled and manually cleaned. These parts include the milk pump components, including the rear seal, tanker hoses and connection stubs, the manhole cover and associated parts, and the stainless steel inlet valve to the tank compartment and its gaskets. Tankers must be cleaned and sanitized after each day's use, at least once in a 24-hour period. Tankers left out of service more than 96 hours must be sanitized prior to use. If the time between farm pickups exceeds four hours, the pump and rear hoses must be cleaned and sanitized prior to the next pickup. This must be done at a licensed or permitted facility. If you are a new bulk milk weigher and sampler, we hope this information will help you become familiar with your responsibilities. If you are experienced, this should reinforce the role you play in today's modern dairy industry. New or experienced, you should thoroughly familiarize yourself with your responsibilities. Following these procedures helps to ensure a properly functioning milk marketing and food safety system and a thriving dairy industry. Your work directly impacts the dairy producer's livelihood, the quality of milk products for the public, and the safety of our food supply. Thank you for accepting that responsibility.